Hello, I'm doing a movie review, and the movie I want to review is Tenebrae. Now, Tenebrae is a 1982 Italian giallo film co-written and directed by Dario Argento. Now, this was sort of a return to form for Argento, because right before this, he did Suspiria and the sequel, Inferno, but prior to Suspiria, most of his earlier films were giallo films like Deep Red and Bird with the Crystal Plumage. So, this was sort of his return to the giallo genre, but it's a very unique giallo film in a lot of ways. And also, a lot of his films leading up to this were supernatural-based, but this really has no supernatural elements in it at all. It seems to be a lot more reality-based. At the same time, though, like so many of Argento's other films, it does sort of follow a certain kind of dream logic. Now, Tenebrae has really become one of my favorite Dario Argento films. I still say my favorite is probably Suspiria, with Deep Red being a close second, but this is definitely my third favorite Argento film. Now, I first saw this movie about a year or two ago, but I've known about the film for years because my DVD copies of Demons 1 and 2 both come with the trailer for this movie. Now, what the plot of Tenebrae is it's about a mystery writer named Peter Neal who comes to Italy to promote his latest book, Tenebrae. But it turns out there's a serial killer going around killing women, and this killer seems to be inspired by Peter Neal's latest book. And in fact, the first victim that you see in this movie has pages of the novel Tenebrae shoved into her mouth. And while Neil is not really a suspect in the beginning, detectives do let him know about what happened, and then Neil ends up getting targeted by the killer, and the killer starts sending him these threatening letters and these threatening phone calls. And while the detectives are trying to figure out who this killer is, Neil starts conducting an investigation of his own. And that's all I want to say about the plotline of Tenebrae. I definitely don't want to give away the ending. I will say the reveal at the end. It's sort of a twist that you've seen in other things that are similar to this, but it's done in a very unique way. Now, in the film, Peter Neal is played by Anthony Franchalusa. I'm probably not saying his name right at all. But he does a fantastic job in this movie. Actually, I would argue that he gives one of the best performances in any Argento film. Especially at the end of this film. Now, originally, Argento offered the role to Christopher Walken, who I could also see in this part, but as it is, Franchalusa does a great job as this character. Daria Nicoletti, who was romantically involved with Dario Argento at the time, she plays the character of Anne, who is Peter Neal's assistant. And character actor John Saxon, who I've always known best as Donald Thompson in A Nightmare on Elm Street, he plays Peter Neal's agent. Now, of course, there are many other actors and actresses in this film, but a lot of them have Italian names that I'm probably going to butcher if I try to pronounce them. Now, as I said, Tenebrae is definitely one of my favorite Dario Argento films, and there are actually two versions of this movie. When it was released here in the States, it went under the title Unsane, and it was heavily edited, and I think the American cut of this film is actually public domain. Main. Now, I've never seen the American cut, but from what I've heard of that cut, apparently they really did butcher this movie. Now, Tenebrae is a unique giallo film because it's one of the few films of this genre that is shot primarily in the daytime. It's actually one of the most brightly lit giallo films I've ever seen, which is ironic because the title Tenebrae, I'm pretty sure, is actually the Latin word for darkness. Another thing I think is really interesting about this film is this is actually supposed to be set in the not-too-distant future, which I'll admit that doesn't really come out that well in the film, but something Argento was going for here was there's a lot of scenes in this movie where things are very empty and very quiet, and something he was trying to go for is that before the events of this movie, something happened to the world that made things less populated. Again, I don't really think that comes through the best in the film. I only found that out from reading up on this movie and watching the audio commentary on this DVD. 
I'll admit that had I not been told that, I never would have guessed that this movie is supposed to take place in the future. So, while I do think this is a great film, if I were to have a criticism of this movie, I would say the whole dystopic setting of the film is not as apparent as Dario Argento maybe wanted it to be. And the cinematography in this film is fantastic. Like, there's a crane shot over the house of two of the victims, which is a three-minute long, uninterrupted shot, and it's so freaking well done. And as is the case with so many of Dario Argento's other films, his usage of colors and lighting cannot be understated. Like, there's a scene at the end where this woman gets her arm chopped off, and the blood just splatters on the wall, and it's such a horrific scene, yet it's so beautifully done and so beautifully shot that it's like the perfect mix between art and exploitation. The movie also has some interesting themes, like duality is a major theme in this movie, and you'll understand that more by the end of the film. This is also considered to be sort of a metafiction film because it's a mystery film that's very much aware of the tropes of the mystery genre. And also, you have an author in this movie who's basically living out one of his own stories. But also, a lot of critics have run into this film as basically being a direct response to a lot of the criticisms that Dario Argento has gotten in the past. For example, there's a scene in this movie where Peter Neal is confronted by a critic who, ironically, is also a friend of his, despite being a harsh critic of his work, and she accuses his books of being sexist. That character actually goes on to be one of the victims in this movie. But you could tell with that scene that Dario Argento is speaking to a lot of the criticisms that he received over the years for the depictions of violence against women in his movies. And I feel like the movie is very much a commentary on how art can sometimes be misinterpreted and misconstrued to sort of fit into the critic's own personal views. For example, there's a character in this movie who is a conservative TV host, and he does an interview with Peter Neal at one point in the film, and he calls the novel Tenebrae a book about sexual deviancy and its effects on society. And then Neal shuts him down saying, look, that's not what the book is really about. You're not supposed to be rooting for the killer when he's killing these supposed sexual deviants. He even outright says the killer in his novel is insane, and that's something that a lot of critics of horror films seem to forget, is that you're not supposed to be rooting for the killer in horror films. So, the movie really does feel like a direct response to both Dario Argento's critics and critics of horror films in general. And there are some definite gender politics in the film, particularly with these flashbacks concerning this young woman on a beach, and these flashbacks become very important by the end of the film. In these flashbacks, you see this very sexually dominant young woman who has all these young men pretty much wrapped around her finger. And in this flashback, you see her humiliate a boy who hit her. But what's really interesting about these flashback sequences is the actress who plays the young woman on the beach was actually transgender. So you could read something into that if you wanted to, but I don't think Argento actually intended anything with that. Another thing I think is interesting, especially for a movie around this time, is it actually tackles homosexuality. Like that character I mentioned who is a critic of Peter Neal's books, despite also being friends with him, that character is actually a lesbian, and her and her girlfriend end up getting killed in the movie because they're gay. But I don't think Argento is making, like, an anti-gay statement there. Again, to go back to what I was talking about before, you're not supposed to root for the killer when he kills these women. The killer in this movie is the bad guy. He's the villain. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention the music in this movie, which definitely would have been a sin, because the music in this film is incredible. Now, the music in this film is composed by several members of the band Goblin, and I would hold it right up there with their Suspiria soundtrack. Like, definitely, even though I do recommend the movie, I also recommend the music in this movie just on its own. And as is the case with so many of Argento's other films, the music in this movie almost acts as a character unto itself. 
But yeah, I highly recommend Tenebrae. If you're a Giallo fan, and if you're a Dario Argento fan, you'll be doing yourself a disservice if you don't check this movie out. So, that was my review on Dario Argento's Tenebrae, and bye.